welcome my amazing viewers thank you so much for joining me on my program once again i appreciate you wherever you are connecting from if you have not subscribed to my channel please kindly subscribe to my channel click the notification bell so that you be notified each time i upload a video you will be among the first to receive it thank you so much and remember blessed whenever you look my video whenever you watch my video share the video to all platforms share it to family and friends share it in your whatsapp group so that people can get information on what is happening in the contraption called nigeria mainly against the beer france against the Duduas, against the indigenous people in the country called nigeria i try as much as possible to set the record straight i don't preach hate speech i don't speak against people i set the record straight the only important thing i do here is to make sure that the plight of the people remains on the front corner and the world will know the true story of what is going on in the country called nigeria Indeed, it has been a challenging week for Kaduna State with severe terrorist attacks and the bandits wreaked havoc in that state as well. First, the terrorists attacked the Kaduna International Airport, killing one person. 48 hours after, an Abuja-Kaduna-bound train was attacked and eight passengers were killed. And the next day, there was yet another incident on the same route. And just as people were coming to terms with all these attacks, Nguabulu's community in Jukun local government area was invaded by terrorists, leaving two persons dead and several others kidnapped. So what has happened to intelligence gathering? Why has it been difficult to be more proactive than being reactive? To look at this tonight, we have a retired principal Staff Officer of the DSS, Mr. Shea Adetayo, a pleasure having you with us on the news at 10. Good evening. Now, how would you see the combination of attacks all happening within a week? Well, uh, one can uh, say that maybe because of the coming um, the Ramadan that is starting today and they tried to launch several attacks uh, ahead of the Ramadan when they would not be able to carry out attacks. But we will know that from you know, from tomorrow, if we don't see uh, attacks coming, or could, it could be that uh, uh, they've been emboldened so much that they believe that um, the current security structures cannot actually uh, stop them at doing what they're doing. Well, one would have thought that after that attack at the airport, intelligence reports would have been in hand with security operatives to prevent that unfortunate incident would happen in Dutse, where the rail track was damaged and eight travelers killed. Well, if by what we've uh, received from, you know, um, sources and also what we can see in the media, um, intelligence was actually made available to the NRC. And uh, with what we got, that um, both the DSS and the military formation actually, you know, give them intelligence that this is going to happen. And they even advised that um, the night train should be suspended, but this wasn't done. So, so the DSS actually supplied this intelligence? Oh, definitely they did. And the advice was that the night train should be suspended. And uh, there are evidence to us uh, in that direction that they were actually. And uh, we've not seen the NRC coming out to deny the fact that uh, they were actually uh, advised not to run the evening train. So the question is why. But in your own assessment, what would you say is responsible sometimes for failure of intelligence in almost all the attacks, that's besides the one you mentioned? So when a nation is going through situations like this, you continue to get, have to rely on intelligence on a daily basis. However, one thing is for you to have intelligence, and another thing is for the action agencies to act on it. Not only acting on it, but act based on the advice that have been given. Also, subsequent review must also be taken into consideration. We see issues around, you know, raising ISSM, that is integrated security system, as being the issue. It's like you come into a gunfight with a knife. ISSM cannot solve the problem at hand. It is just the best it can do is just to give you, you know, a, I mean, a warning that probably something is placed on the, on, on, on the track. And it won't even solve anything because that is just one of the easiest ways um, these people can actually derail a train without, you know, uh, incurring much casualty. But there are several other ways in which they can use to derail a train without actually putting explosives on the rail. And if, they should, if we should force them into that, because we don't have a way of protecting the system. They would do use other means, and there will be much casualty. And one of those means is to fire a rocket, an RPG on an incoming train. They target the first one, and the whole train will drill. We have so many casualties. They will go there. Pick the number of people they want to pick, even with ISS, even if you are warned and you are notified that such is happening, if you send in an aircraft or, a, I mean, or, or an helicopter, can you fire at a vehicle carrying hostages? You can't. The best they can do is just to watch them as they drive into the forest. This same people has AA rifle, that is anti-aircraft rifle. They can shoot down 
the jet, they can shoot down an aircraft or even an helicopter. When they die straight, what we're expecting now is that action that is bigger than someone suggesting an ISSM in a war situation. It's just like, you know, you are trying to renovate a house, you know, like somebody in Ukraine now in Kiev now trying to renovate his house. Of what value is the house renovation when your when your time is uh, is is, is, is uh, you know undergoing a war? I mean, facing a war, uh, shelling from Russia. So that's the situation we have. ISM can work on Lagos Ibadan okay. because the challenge on Lagos Ibadan Rail is not the same with the environment in Kaduna. Environment in Kaduna is a war situation, and the 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 the, the, the I, I mean, the better the earlier we declare. Uh, a state of war in those areas and government should activate protocols a country used to activate when you are in a war situation and deal with the situation all this one is more or less like a cosmetic approach and then uh, we're just window dressing and it will not stop another attack will come even put ism in uh, issm on cardinal they will still attack it these are people that are emboldened enough to attack a military formation now nda has solid response asset on ground they knew and yet they attacked it means that they, they don't care whether you respond to the attack they will do what they want to do 10 15 minutes they are out so is there a way we can rejig the intelligence network to make it more effective the problem now is not about intelligence okay what's it's about the problem? what we do with the intelligence that we have how we act on that intelligence. are we acting are we acting properly are we doing the right thing or are we doing what we feel we want to do or what has been advised by professionals as, as to how to address the situation at hand. No, we have people, we have friends that have been lost, we have people close to us that are right now being kidnapped. Nobody is happy with what is happening. And if a Nigerian right now, you should be concerned about what is happening because it rubs on all of us. We're talking about Kaduna now. If care is not taken, these people will be emboldened and start moving down south. So if anybody feels that they are safe right now, businesses are affected. So the economy is affected. So many things are affected. And we're talking about a nation where we are losing jobs every day. And this is happening. More jobs will be lost. Now, Mr. Adetayo, going forward now, what should be done to prevent future attacks? The people that are responsible should advise the president the right way. Because the belief is that is that is what they told the president, that at SSM is the solution. And he didn't waste time. He gave approval. But we are professionals. ISSM is not something new. It's just a bunch of sensors and cameras and, and, and a system where people monitor those, those sensors. And then you, you have a, a notification system where you can trigger uh, action agencies to respond. That's all. Chevron, oil and gas companies, big companies have that in Nigeria. Go to the oil, I mean, oil and gas in, in, in Niger Delta. They have that. It's not a big deal. It's not, it's not a rocket science. It can't solve the problem. So what can solve the problem? What we need to solve the problem is that we need to actually deal with the issue. There's a war situation. We're having people with capabilities to wage war against Nigeria. They are waging war against Nigeria. Let us meet them fire for fire, law for law. We need to create an enabling environment for the military to be able to thrive. Under this condition that we have, the military cannot thrive. They cannot be able to launch the adequate response to what we have. Mr. Shea Ditayo, a retired principal staff officer. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you are notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye bye. See you again. <music>